Hashtag relatable. for being interested in my little slice of crafty life down here in um, the greater Nashville area in Tennessee in the United States. I live here with my husband and our daughter Charlotte and our two dogs Stella and Barley and our uh, fat orange cat Rimley. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. I don't have uh, too much on the knitting front to share with you today, but I am excited for what I do have to share. So I hope y'all stick around and uh, listen to me ramble on a little bit about all of these fun projects that I've been working on. So the first thing I wanted to talk about are my uh, works in progress or my lips. So um, my Ingles sweater. I did finish Charlotte's, so I'll show that in a little bit, um, cause that one I have a little bit to say, because like I said, she's six months, so um, and the pattern does have a size for extra extra small, so that's the one I followed. But I have some notes after finishing one for such a small person, <laughs> so that'll be interesting. So, but for now, here is mine. I have oh that color, um, so I've bound off the the hen here at the bottom and you can obviously see the color change from that second ball of yarn that I was talking about in the last episode and I have cast on my first sleeve so I've changed down to some um, 3.75 um, needles or, I'm sorry no I didn't actually I'm getting ahead of myself these are still four millimeter needles I wanted to use a 3.75 on the body which I probably should have done just because I am a loose knitter so I probably should have done that but um, I kept with the with the four since that's what I knit the body on um, and I picked back up that ball that I had done most of the body in that I talked about last time that got so tangled and I mean basically a tangled mess where I, it was unusable and I got so frustrated trying to untangle it but I sat down the other night and all I did was untangle this ball of yarn before I went to bed and um, yeah so I did that and I had a couple of um, sections where I cut so when I first cast this on you can tell it does match because I tried to match them as best I could um, I do have an alt light, so like a day, a daylight, so I could look under that at night, I guess, but to my eyes, it looked matching, and then for the rest of the ball, I went ahead and I caked it, and then I just wound the rest around, like, loosely to where it wouldn't, ugh, I don't know, but I'm trying, I'm trying to work with it, but the second I tied on, because I only had a little bit of that first color, the second I tied this back on I could tell it was changing and the camera picks it up perfectly right here so even though this is the ball that I was working the body with it is different so I know this yarn is it's not variegated but it's kind of tonal it's like a heathered gray so I thought maybe at the worst that it would be a little bit different there but it is darker within the same ball of yarn <sighs> So I guess my sleeve is just going to match down here and I'm not that concerned with it honestly. I think it's kind of cute. It adds a little bit of char character to the sweater. Um, I can live with it. I think as long as after I block it, it fits me um, big, kind of oversized, um, I think I'll still reach for it and wear it. And that is exactly what I'm wanting when I'm starting to knit these sweaters are pieces that I reach for, kind of capsule wardrobe practical pieces that I just want to wear all the time. And especially now that it's getting a little bit cooler, I am always in long sleeves, um, oversized, everything, cardigans, and some skinny jeans, or I guess I'll break out my leggings. I haven't worn leggings since I was pregnant. I got too big to wear them, and then I put them all up, and... Yeah, so I probably need to break back out my leggings, but yeah, so I should. I made a pretty good progress on this just in a day, um, so I'm thinking by the end of the week maybe I'll have a sleeve, unless I just, you know, work on it nonstop, which, which I might, and then I could potentially have two sleeves. 
<sighs> so that's exciting. So that is the Ingles sweater. That's by Caitlin Hunter of Boylan Knits. And I'm just using, it's from Hobby Lobby Yarn B Soft and Sleek DK. Uh, low pill, it says it is 100% acrylic. So I am worried about how this is going to block. I think I will uh, like lightly steam block it because I do want it to be longer but it has a ton of stretch so I think that it'll be as long as it fits me around the shoulders and the chest area I think that it it'll be plenty snuggly and cozy so that's exciting yay okay so here is Charlotte's Ingles Ta -da! and I have the two ends on her little sleeves haven't been woven in because I'm kind of afraid um, that they're going to come undone. So I'm trying to figure out the best way, like if I should put a little tack of fabric glue on them. So they are woven in and knotted, but they're not um, completely sewn in. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. And um, like I said, some funny things about this because it is the extra, extra small size. So I ended up not doing the, it does the pattern, it is paid pattern, uh, this is again Caitlin Hunter of Boylan Knitworks, um, the ink will sweater, so it, on the back, so the back, it would have short row shaping here to give a little bit more shaping, but I, ex I excluded that from this one because I knew it was for a baby, so she didn't really need that shaping, and then um, I obviously didn't knit, I think it's 15 inches of stock net for the body, because this is already at her, almost her uh, butt level. So that was long enough. And then the sleeves, this comes down past her elbow. So I just kind of um, did a little tiny um, hem on both and cast it off. And I lightly blocked it. It didn't really need it, honestly. It had an okay shape and it's for her. It's She's gonna probably spit up on it a little bit and I'm gonna have to wash it and then, and it is, it's the same exact yarn as mine just in the contrasting colors and it is acrylic yarn so um, I'll have to probably block it every single time and it's fine. I did lightly do this because on these, on the increase rounds, it makes these, um, I don't know what you would call that, pleats kind of almost look, but on mine you can kind of see it and then as you knit the body it kind of evens itself out. It's almost like gravity kind of just like straightens it out. So for her, since I didn't knit that that long, it kind of like billows out around the midsection. So what I did, and I would need to go to the craft store or order some, I want to get a little bit thicker. This is just satin ribbon. It's pink. So I want to get maybe just double this width and the this gray color. And I've woven it, can you see? I've woven it in. Um, every other rib or so because um, it's a one by two rib so I just every other one and then I know it's really long I was taking some pretty pictures so I wanted the ribbon to be really long on the side and then I just um, when she's wearing it I can just kind of like pull it to fit her a little bit better and then tie a big bow on the side so um, I'll insert some pictures at the end of her wearing some little leggings um, with this and then the cute little bow she is sitting right here next to me. If you keep see me looking down, she woke up from her nap. So, and I still wanted to um, show you guys this. So yeah, that is her little Ingles sweater. We are going, my husband has a, uh, we, they do work events. Um, it's actually where I used to work as well. So I'm excited to see everybody because I have been staying home with her and I haven't been to visit since she was four weeks. So I'm really excited to see everybody, but they're all going to a pumpkin patch kind of near where we live. Um, next this upcoming Saturday so I'm planning on her wearing this with some cute little leggings and getting some really freaking adorable pictures of her with some pumpkins while we're while we're up there so um, and if I have mine finished I'll wear mine too and then we can get some cute fall pictures of us in our matching sweaters yeah we'll be super cute so yeah so that is that one so the next thing I have to talk about is actually a cross stitch. Um, I loved cross stitch. I actually used to have an Etsy store where I mostly did custom cross stitch. Um, they were mostly vulgar cross stitches. I, I think that is the funniest trend that ever was. And there's so many creative things you can do with that trend and I just loved it. And I actually did get a lot of custom orders. People wanted the craziest things. It was really fun. Um, but 
as with most handmade things, the price point wasn't always worth the amount of work that I was doing for them. So I did eventually, and I was working full time. So I did eventually close that down, um, but I do miss it and I do still cross stitch when it, the urge overtakes me. So a couple of months ago, I watched the Cherry Heart podcast, if you guys have ever seen that, with uh, Sandra Paul. She's awesome. I love watching her. Um, you should definitely go check her out. Um, and she mentioned that I went back, I watched a couple of her newer podcasts, and then I loved it. So, of course, I went back and binged watch every single episode. Um, yeah, so in one of the very early episodes, it's either 13 or 14, she shows this cross stitch. Um, it is from Brooks Books blog. I'm not sure if the blog is still active. Sometimes it's hard for me to find it. Um, but it is a series of houses. So uh, Sandra showed this one. This is the summer house. You see my hoop ring. I haven't washed it or anything. And this one that I'm working on is the autumn house. So there will be, or there is a spring house and this might be the spring. I think this is the summer house. There's a spring house and a winter house. So they all have a different theme. And uh, this is the one that Brooke has up on her blog. And through some Googling, I did find all of the other ones in a complete downloadable pattern. Um, so it's got the graft and the color, the graph and the colors that Brooke uses for hers. I'm just looking at the picture and then just picking. I have a whole stash of DMC and various brands that I've, I've cross stitched them. So I'm just looking at the picture and kind of picking out uh, what I like and what goes with what. So for the uh, summer house, we're going to call it, I wanted, I started doing like a, a muted uh, theme, kind of like vintage-y looking, and then I kind of ran out of colors and had to just go with what I, th I thought looked best, but that is why some of the grass kind of looks like it's fine, but I like it, I like it. And then on the um, autumn one, it definitely has some Halloween vibes. I believe there's a spider that is hanging off the tree because each one of them, like the sunflowers here, so this one will have a spider, um, and of course the pumpkin, super cute, and I'm doing like Halloween colors. These roofs are my favorite thing. This color scheme that I've got here, I want to uh, crochet a blanket out of that color scheme. It is so pretty, and I hope the colors are coming across to you guys um, vividly. It's just, I love it. But yeah, and the only thing about this that is so time consuming, I mean it is time consuming. I'm using 14 count um, paper on this one, but the empty space, I couldn't decide if I wanted to fill it in or not. But there is a lot of empty space, and I didn't follow this pattern exactly. I made a little bit, um, some differences, as you do. Um, but I did decide in the end to go and fill all the empty space with just white, and that took just as long as the whole house. Um, so I kind of regretted, I mean, probably two weeks. So maybe it was a whole month it took me to do that one. Um, so I kind of regretted that because I'm going to have to do that on the rest of the houses to make it look cohesive. And I'm definitely going to do a border and then frame it in a really pretty frame. So I have all this extra fabric to do the other two houses above. And I'm going to try to finish this one by fall and then just start the winter one whenever probably like early December have that be some cozy couch knitting or knitting I'm thinking I'm looking at my angle sweater like I need to knit um cozy couch um cross stitch to do my winter one so I am working on that just whenever the mood um takes me because cross stitch it is a little uh labor intensive and at the end of the night I am pretty tired and this angle sweater has just been so nice because I can just sit and knit and stock net stitch and it has just I mean it's just relaxing and honestly how frustrating the tangles were in the yarn even that's kind of relaxing because some nights I just sat in the untangled yarn so I didn't really even have to think about anything just untangling my yarn it's been really nice so I'm definitely going to have to start researching my next knitted project which is probably going to be another Caitlin Hunter pattern and going to be another sweater. Let me pick up Charlie's toy one second. So Charlie's going to sit with me for our last section, which is personal stuff. Yay! <laughs> so uh, just in my personal life lately, um, a couple weeks ago we had her little half birthday, six month ordeal. So she'll be seven months here very soon. And we're all very excited. 
for her. She's a little sweetie. Lately, she um, she's trying to crawl. She's getting really close to crawling. She's become interested in the puppies. That one there is Barley. She's very nosy, uh, and they've they've been notice they've been noticing her. She's been noticing them a little bit more, and everybody's getting along. Um, and other than that, really, I haven't had too much going on. I did want to, in this personal section, talk about my dying a little bit. Not my dying, but my potential yarn dying. So I ordered everything that I needed, and um, I ordered most of the actual supplies off of Amazon, and all of that came. So like tongs, and a hotel pan, and um, gloves, citric acid, what else? Just all of the things like that that I needed um, and then for my actual dye and yarn I ordered off of Dharma Trading so I got the first two that I ordered just on a whim were poinsettia and sour apple obviously Christmas vibes are happening there so I um, want to do my first a uh, little bit of experimentation I want to do some Christmas colors I did buy some uh, nice yarn from Dharma that I do plan if everything works out on my practice yarn, which was just some Knit Picks Ecru uh, pack of 10 from Amazon, which was surprisingly affordable. I think it was like 17 or $18 for 10 of them. So um, I'm going to practice on that and see how that goes. And then if all that works out and I love, you know, what I've done or whatever, I'll take the plunge and do some on the Dharma yarn, would I? Um, so I got a fingering weight and a, I think it's either worsted or DK. I might have gone with the DK because it was a blue face luster and I love that. So, um, went with just those two just for now, just to sit and experiment and figure out kind of what I want to do, um, and just see how it goes. And I'm really, really excited. Um, I did order other colors. Those, the poinsettia and the sour apple are just kind of the two I'm most excited about. And Charlie's excited. She's like, when do I get, um, when do I get to eat, Mom? <laughs> she um, has started. We started her on solids quite a, a long time ago, but um, it, we've just been doing purees, and we tried to give her. Kyle and I tried to give her some eggs the other day, and she, this, I mean, babies put everything in their mouth, and then like she's everything in their mouths. But with the eggs, she would not. I even tried to put a little bit with some pureed carrots on a spoon. And this little girl figured out how to spit out the eggs and keep the carrots. And I snapped a ton of pictures. It's hilarious. She hated it. And then I tried to do some, um, <clears throat> just some sweet potatoes steamed. And then I mashed them up a little bit with some water. And I tried to do that. And she eats sweet potatoes and purees all the time. So I figured she would love it. And nope. So PSA, if this video seems a little bit choppy, it is because uh, Charlotte, my daughter, has had a crazy, just sporadic nap day. We are working on going from really four naps to three down to two. She kind of can't figure out her sleep cycles. And yeah, so I have had to start stop so many times just to check on her and make sure everything is going okay. And yeah, so sorry for um, the choppiness if it's noticeable when I edit it. Hopefully I can try to edit a little bit out. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was my dying. I am so excited about all of this. I talk about it a little bit in my outro. So as I'm saying goodbye, I kind of mentioned the things, but I went and grabbed. Um, I mentioned that I purchased from Dharma Trading all of my acid dyes that I'm going to use. So I just went ahead, I mean this was sometime last week, and I got two colors. Um, the Christmas Spirit really took over me. I saw the Nellis Cottage ear warmers that I talked about a second ago. And um, it was Christmas color, so I just, the inspiration. So when I went on, they had a poinsettia color and a sour apple, which sour apple is just, I mean, it kind of looks like a Granny Smith green. And that's one of my, other than the deep, emerald greens or just the forest green that goes with Christmas colors. I love the light Granny Smith green with the um, deep red. I just, that's my favorite Christmas combination. So I thought I would just show the two little dyes that I got. I just got two ounce ones to start. I just, just to experiment. So that's the poinsettia and that's the sour apple. So they're all labeled. I figured I would also label the top 
Um, I'm not, I haven't ever used them, so I'm not sure how they, once I undo this tape that they've got on here, I'm not sure how well they close. I'm sure they close fine because it is ha kind of hazardous, a hazardous substance. So I'm, I'm sure they close tightly, but I wouldn't want to lay them like that if they're not meant to be laid like that and then label the tops. Um, because this storage um, shelf over here that I talked about last time, I am going to start clearing it off this week and make at least one little section my dye, eat my dyeing items. <laughs> She's crying again. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. She's fine. So I do want to clear off at least one shelf and have a dedicated dyeing shelf. Um, I do want to get maybe a basket or something closed for the yarn. Um, I know Barley was in here um, when I was recording, but usually the dogs don't enter this area. They both shed. Stella's a lab mix. She's short-haired, but she sheds almost just as bad as Barley, who is a Australian Shepherd, kind of Great Pyrenees, long, white-haired. Um, we just got her hair trimmed, so she looks a little... Uh, shaved right now but she still sheds so they are not allowed in here most of the time for fear of their fur getting all over my crafty bits which yarn is just a magnet for hair so even though they're not allowed in here I do want to I think get some closed boxes or I mean I could just keep it in the the plastic wrap that it comes in but I'm wanting to do it all like cute organized um like that up there so that is one of my projects for this week i'm really excited i love organizing and decorating i still want to um, do something back here behind me uh, this little coat rack right here is really growing on me though at first i was going to take it down that way i could um either do shelving here um, above and put a desk back there or just uh, art and stuff on the wall back there and crochet and knitting and cross stitch stuff but I love the convenience of this coat rack here. I just have some project bags and those are two little dresses. I've made Charlie, that blue one is a newborn and then that one you can't really see that pink one. It is so cute. I, in my very first podcast, put some pictures of her in that one. It still fits. I think it's a six to nine month or even a nine to 12 month. I just couldn't wait and I put it on her a couple months ago and took some pictures of her with a blanket that I made her while I was pregnant. But anyways, um, that is my upcoming week. Really excited to do that. Um, as I said a million times, I don't have that much free time during the day while I'm watching Charlie, but she does love to watch me run around and do things. So I figure I will just put her in her pack and play or in her seat or just lay out a blanket on the floor in here and she'll have a big time watching me <laughs> clear off shelves and decorate a little bit. So yeah. Um, that's about all I wanted to talk about, so I will cut to the next video. <laughs> Bye guys. The joys of dogs. They had unplugged my cord, so uh, yeah. But anyways, um, that's basically all I think I wanted to talk about. Um, Charlie and her distaste for uh, solid foods, but she loves all the purees, just actual solids we're still working on. Will you say hi? Let's see. Will you say hi? <gasps> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. What are you doing? <laughs> like, who are you talking to? But yeah, um, I want to thank you guys for watching, um, sticking around, being interested in all of my makes and my ramblings, and watching me continue on this journey. I'm really excited. My next podcast, I should definitely have some dying content. I'm hoping, um, you know, everything goes well and I don't self combust and get super frustrated and whatever, but I'm really excited. I think it's going to work out and I think I'm going to love it and I just cannot wait. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Say bye. And thank you so much for watching. I hope y'all have a wonderful week and enjoy this cooler weather that I think most of the country is starting to get a little bit. I heard that it's supposed to be um, looking out for snow more in the Canada um, area of the country, but still it is a little cooler here and we're enjoying having the windows open today, getting some fresh air, um, turning the AC off, which is crazy because it was just 90 degrees yesterday. 
Um, but yeah, hope y'all have a wonderful week. And again, thank you so much for watching. If you would like to um, stay in the loop, um, please feel free to click the subscribe button below. Um, you can click the notification bell or follow me on Instagram where I'm Southern Makes Co. I post a picture saying that I have my new podcast video up on YouTube and I update the link in my description. So that way all you have to do is click on that if you are interested in seeing that. And um, otherwise, I'm Southern Makes across um, Ravelry and on Etsy. So, um, I will definitely put an update if I put something in the shop related to my yarn dyeing adventures. But for now, it's just um, the bear shop, so there's nothing much to see. But you could go favorite it if you want to stay in the loop on any updates there. So yeah, thank y'all so much for watching. Have a good week. Bye!